Hello, and welcome to this VSuite version 0.4 video tutorial. And in this video tutorial, I'm just going to cover some of the tricks and considerations you need to have, or may need to have, when importing geometry from a third-party package like Rhino or AutoCAD. A lot of my students do their building modeling in Rhino, uh, but Rhino is not a mesh modeler. Blender is primarily a mesh modeler, so geometry is made up of vertices, edges, and faces, but Rhino is a surface modeler. So when you export a mesh format from Rhino to import into Blender, Rhino will convert that geometry, its native geometry, into a mesh geometry, and that may not be ideal for simulation with the V-Suite. And when you import it into Blender, you might have to do some things to make the geometry visible, and to um, clean it up a little bit so that our simulation process goes a little bit faster. So um, I've got my default scene open. I've uh, deleted the default cube. Um, but ooh, let me just put this back to the default so we start fresh. OK. Now into this scene, I have imported a Studio Max file. A 3DS file that was exported from Rhino with I guess the default settings and I've imported it with my file import 3D studio menu entry but I can't see the geometry I can't see it anywhere um, and this happens for a number of reasons and I'll run through these reasons and show you how to get the geometry to appear within the 3D scene. The first thing to check is if the geometry has actually been imported into Blender. So even if you can't see it here, we may see in the outliner window a list of objects. And if we see this list of objects, and these are sort of new objects that were created when we pressed import, then we know that the geometry has come in. It is within the Blender scene somewhere, we just can't see it. Um, and we can see I've got one, uh, 275 separate objects have come in. So why can't I see it within the 3D view? Well, it could be that when we exported from Rhino, we used millimeters as the units, and Blender interprets those units as one Blender unit. So sometimes the model is just so big, it doesn't appear within the 3D view. Um, sometimes we have modeled in Rhino the building away from the origin point of Rhino's three-dimensional space. And the Blender viewport, by default, looks at the origin point of Blender's 3D space. So if the geometry was modeled in Rhino away from its origin point, that geometry will then be imported into Blender away from Blender's geometry point. So the first thing we can do, we know the objects have come in, so if I select one of these objects, and by default actually all of these objects will be selected when they first come in. So I'm just going to select them all now with my box select tool. to get to the original starting position. Importing all so many separate objects is um, also a problem which I will cover within this tutorial. Okay, so this is how you will start when you first import with all the objects selected, but we can't see them. So the first thing to do, as these objects are all selected when they first come in, if we do view selected, okay, our viewpoint has changed. And now the viewpoint is centered on these selected objects, our imported objects. But I still can't really 
still can't really see them. It mm, looks a bit funny. Now, the reason for that can be that the geometry is very large because it's been imported as millimeters, so it's huge in blender space. And when we look at it, we find that we are clipping the geometry. Now, clipping geometry is controlled by this clip start and end numbers in our 3D view properties panel. And this, uh, these clip numbers basically define how close um, or how far away something needs to be for us to see it. So from the perspective that I'm looking at the 3D scene, an object or geometry has to be more than 0.1 blender units away and less than 1,000 blender units away. But if we've imported in millimeters, the object could be much bigger than 1,000 across. And so a lot of the geometry is being clipped and we can't really see what's, what's going on when we look at it in a 3D view. So the first thing to do is to increase this number. So I'll just increase that very high. Ah, now we see geometry. Okay, so we are now centered, the viewport is now centered on the geometry and we can see all the geometry. So why couldn't we see that originally? Well, this geometry is way off. We can see from this location, the location is defined by this little yellow circle. Um, we can see that the geometry is way off the center point of the 3D view space. So we might want to bring that back to the 3D view space. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make all these 275 objects one object. That is not necessary per se, but it makes it easier to then bring this geometry back to the origin point if they are all one object. So I'm going to go into wireframe mode and I'm going to select all my geometry. We'll make sure all my geometry is selected and then I'm going to press Control J and what Control J does is it joins together all the objects that are selected. Now that's not quite, I've reduced my number of objects, but I haven't eliminated them completely so I might just box select again and sometimes geometry is so small it doesn't get selected with box select, but now I can see everything is selected, control J again, and now that geometry has become one object. And now that it's one object, I can make the location 0, 0, 0. And if I do view selected again, our geometry is at the origin point. Now, the other thing about the geometry that comes in is its scale, its size, which in this case is huge because it's come in as millimeters. And we can see the dimensions of this object here. And yeah, 14,000, 27,000. So we need to scale this down by 1,000 to convert from the millimeter scaling to one meter per blender unit, which is what the V-Suite uses. So scale, um, S on the keyboard is scale in Blender. So if I press S and 0.001, that's now scaled it down. It's now tiny. If I do view selected again though, we can now see, uh, okay, yeah, I can see my uh, grid plane around my origin point. I can now see that my geometry is located at the 000. And I can see that my scale is 14 meters by 27 meters by 24 meters which is fine. And I can turn my clipping plane down again, or my clipping end down again, as I don't need it. So those are the basics of getting the geometry to appear in the Blender scene. It may be well away from the origin point, so you do view selected to look at it. Um, it might lie outside the clipping boundaries, so you increase your clipping end value until you can see it. And then it might be worth joining all the objects together, moving them to the origin point and scaling the object then to its correct size. So that's fine. That can be seen now. And, and we could start to process this geometry and simulate with this geometry if we wanted. But there are a couple of other things you might want to consider when bringing in geometry from a non-mesh modeler like Rhino.
and we can see what we might, uh, or we can see what a problem might be here with this ugly triangulation of the geometry. And we can also see that up here, this geometry is made of 82,000 vertices and 64,000 faces, um, which is a lot. The V-suite can handle it in theory, but it will make everything slower if we try and convert all these vertices and faces. And it doesn't look as if this geometry is actually complex enough to justify that amount of, uh, that number of geometric entities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to make sure that everything is selected. And there's now a couple of things I can do to clean up this geometry. If I press a space bar, that brings up a list of all of Blender's operators. And if I start, start tapping in remove, we will see this option here, mesh remove doubles. Now if I click on that, the geometry hasn't changed, but we can see that I've removed about 49,000 vertices. Um, what's happened is that Rhino has created multiple vertices on top of each other and what the remove doubles operation in Blender does is it removes these duplicated vertices and then heals the mesh so that all the edges and faces attach to the one remaining vertex. So um, that's cleaned up a lot of vertices but shouldn't change the actual geometry. Um, and the final thing we can do is to get rid of all these ugly, excessive triangulations of these planar faces. I can hit space again, and now I can start to tap in limited dissolve. If I click limited dissolve, that's now cleaned up that geometry so that a planar face isn't now made up of a number of faces. A planar face is just now made up of one face. And that has now reduced my faces down to 15,000, my vertices down to 26,000. So it's still a lot, partly because of this very fine level geometry that I have here, but it's much less than it was. And we'll find now that we can export and simulate with this geometry much quicker than we could before. Um, and I think that's everything I need to cover in this video tutorial. Okay, thanks for watching.